Hello and welcome to this video demonstration. My name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Today I'll be walking through the SPSS solution to canonical correlation and canonical commonality provided by Nyman, Henson, and Gates in their 2010 multivariate behavioral research paper. You can find this article linked on our webpage or you can also find it through Google Scholar. Just a quick note about this article. Um, it does provide solutions for both R and SPSS. This video demonstration will walk through the SPSS code only. The R solution is provided in a separate video. So to get started, go ahead and open up this article and we're going to scroll down to Appendix B. Um, that's what includes all of the instructions and syntax to conduct these analyses. So towards the bottom of page 723, you'll see Appendix B. And you can see the first thing we need to do is to um, download and copy a couple of syntax files, um, the canonical correlation macro, which is actually from SPSS and the commonality coefficients macro from Dr. Nyman's webpage. So to find the canonical correlation macro, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this file name and right click to copy. And then I'm going to open up SPSS and I'm going to go to help to search for this file name so that I can try to find where it's saved. So we'll help topics and then in the search bar I'm going to right click to paste and then hit enter to search. So this first search result I'm going to go ahead and open that up and it gives us some syntax that we don't need but we're going to focus here on the file path. So you can see it's in the installation directory and then samples English and then we'll find our file. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my documents and search for this. I know that my SPSS installation directory is under C. Program Files, SPSS Inc, PASW Statistics 18, and then we know from our help file we need to go to Samples, English, and then we should scroll down and see Canonical Correlation. So once you've found this file, go ahead and click on it and you can right click to copy and what we're going to do is copy it from this SPSS directory into a working directory just to make things a little bit easier on us. So I'm going to go to my working directory and paste this file in. So now we see that the file is in my working directory. Now I'm going to go back to the Nyman, Henson and Gates article and get to the internet site to find my commonality coefficient syntax. So I'm going to highlight this path, right click to copy, and then in my Internet Explorer I'll copy that, go to the web page to get that syntax. Now this will open in one of two different ways. You could get a dialog box asking you to save the syntax file. If you do, go ahead and save to your working directory, the same place that we just put the other file. Um, the other way is that it could just automatically open the syntax file and so you'll be looking at a lot of text like I have here on my screen. This is fine, it just requires a couple of extra steps. So we'll need to copy this and get it into SPSS. So to do that, I'm going to right click and select all. You can also do control A and then right click and copy and control C will do the same thing. Now that we have all of this text copied we're going to go back into SPSS and open a new syntax file. So go to file, new, syntax. And once that opens we can right click and paste. Control V will do the same thing for you. And then we need to save this file into our working directory. And we want to take special care to name it the same thing that the article names it. So we're going to name it commonalitycoefficients.sps. 
So in the syntax file, go to File, Save As, and then again make sure that you are in your working directory, which I am. So I'm going to replace syntax1 with the file name from our article, commonality coefficients dot SPS and save and then we can go ahead and close this syntax file. Now returning to the Nyman, Henson and Gates paper we can scroll down and see that our next step is to copy our data file to our working directory. I've already done this. I'm using the same um, data set as Nyman, Henson and Gates. Um, it's the HS dot data. So it's already here, so I don't have to copy that. An important note about using these ma macros, um, your data set file names and all variable names must be eight characters or less. So go ahead and take a minute if you're using your own data and make sure that nothing exceeds eight characters. Um, if they do, these macros will not run. Okay, so once we're sure that we're good there, I'm going to go ahead and just copy the rest of this syntax and I'm going to paste it into an SPSS syntax file just so that we don't have to keep going back and forth. So once I have it highlighted, again right click to copy, I'm going to come to SPSS, go File, New, Syntax, right click, and Paste. And I'm going to go ahead and add some spaces between the various steps just to make this a little bit easier to look at. You don't have to do this to make things run. Okay, so you can see here the first line of code will change your working directory. So CD stands for change directory. Now my working directory is not C canonical so I have to change this. So I'm going to go back to my documents. I still have this folder open. So you can see my working directory is Amanda and then stats. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and it will convert this into a file path. Right click to copy. And then I'm going to take that back to my syntax and paste over the default um, working directory that was provided. So once you have your working directory set, um, there's a couple of things that I'm going to change with my version of SPSS for some reason. The apostrophes, um, they won't run, so I have to change them to quotation marks. So for my change directory line, I'm going to change the apostrophe marks to quotations. And the same thing for my include lines. Again, just replacing the apostrophes with quotation marks. And again, where it says get file, changing apostrophes to quotation marks. And then if you come down to the save out file, I'm actually just going to delete these apostrophes. Um, they're not needed. And actually, with them in this version of SPSS, will save it as dot save apostrophe. So it saves it with a weird um, file. So we'll just go ahead and take those out and it will still run just fine. Okay, so now that we've made those changes, we can go ahead and start running some of this syntax. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run these first three lines together. I'm gonna change the directory and include these two macros. So you can highlight all of this and hit play. And you should be able to see in your output that the working directory was changed and then you included the, the canonical macro and it gives you a little bit of information. And you've included the commonality macro and it gives you a little bit of information. So the next thing we need to do is get our data file. If you look right now, you'll see I don't have any data open yet. So that's what this next line of code will do. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. You can highlight the comment if you want. You don't have to. You can highlight just that line of code and hit the play button. And then you'll see that I have data open now. So our next step is to run the canonical correlation and create our variate scores. 
So I'm going to highlight these two lines of code and hit play. And you'll see SPSS opening some things, closing some things um, as it performs its various calculations. Once you see in the lower right hand that it's not um, processing anything, you can go ahead and move on. And I'm going to save this out file. It's the next step. So highlight that and run. And then it'll tell you that it has created the file. And just as a double check, we'll look in our um, working directory file and you can see HSA has been saved there. So now we're ready to run our commonality macro. So this code right here, we'll do that. Okay, so now we're ready to conduct our commonality analysis. So it'll be these lines of code right here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. And you can see in the comments right above um, what all of these different things should be. So the DEP line will be the dependent variable name. Your DB is your data set file name, again, in your working directory. Your set will be your output set, which is basically the file name preamble, just whatever you want to call it. And then um, your the IND is a list of your independent variables. So with this highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button. And again, you'll see SPSS opening some windows, closing some windows, so just kind of sit back while it performs these computations. And then it'll kind of um, settle down and you'll see down here in the lower right that it's ready, which means it's not computing anything else, so you know that all of your analyses are complete. So what these macros have done for you is create a couple of different data sets and they will be in the working directory that we've been working from for everything else. <clears throat> so you have a couple of data sets for your criterion variables and then a couple for your predictor variables. So you'll not only have your commonality results, but you'll also have all possible subsets results, which has been added since the 2010 publication. So I'll go ahead and open this file just to show you what it is. You'll see that you have R squared values with your variables by themselves and then with the various combinations. And then you have um, your CC by variable, so your commonality by variable. And see you have your variables, unique variance, common variance, and then your total variance explained. Then you have a the same commonality results just in a, a slightly different way. So you can see unique to each of your variables the associated coefficients and the percentages. And then of course you have your different combinations and your total. So like I said you'll have these three data sets not only for your criterion but also for your predictor variables. Well, that about does it for this video demonstration. Again, my name is Amanda. I'm from the University of North Texas COI Information Research and Analysis Lab. Um, you can visit us at our webpage. The address is www.coi.unt.edu slash IRA lab. On our webpage, you can find out more about us. You can see our hours, schedule an appointment to come talk to me about your research. Um, we have a couple of these demonstration videos on here under how to, as well as a whole host of both qualitative and quantitative research resources. So feel free to take advantage of that. And thanks again.